Music industry executives are concerned that they can no longer break new artists. We want to talk about what happened and how we can get it to be fixed. Check it out. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? It's the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. We are your hosts, Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. I'm Juggernaut. I'm Mike Trauma D. And together, we make the super-duper group Architect Beats. If it's your first time here, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every week, we get together and we talk about different music industry topics to help you with your journey in this crazy music industry. So this week, we wanted to talk about this article that we saw come up on Complex that came through uh, on Twitter, where folks were just talking about the music industry is basically depressed because they can't break new artists. And we've been talking about this for, what, maybe for the last year, about the music industry being very stale, redundant, algorithmic, and all those other things. And this is where we come. Like, we've put ourselves in this position because no one was basically paying attention to the music and what needed to be taken care of in terms of creativity and making things different. So let's get into this, Mike. It's crazy right now because they can't break music. So if you can't break music, it, it's about to be real crazy. You ain't going to have any more stars. And it's it's interesting that it's happening now after, what, 50 years of hip-hop? Uh, no number ones on, on hip-hop. And I, it's, it's, it's a crazy time for this to be happening, you know? Um, and it kind of doesn't make sense because on one hand, you got 50 Cent and these guys doing it for the final lap tour. He just sold a million tickets to his show, right? So obviously people want this music. So what's what's really going on? Like, why you can't break any new artists? Like, but let's, let's talk about that. People want certain kind of music. And um, if you really think about it, all right, let's talk about 50 years of hip hop, right? Who are we marketing to now as far as new talent? Who, who who are the consumers? I think the the thirty year old and up I don't want to hear the music that's currently being played on the radio or the popular quote unquote popular music. I don't think they want to hear it. You know, it's too violent. It, it's tired of violent the violence. They're, all the records are sounding the same. Every region sounds like one region. Um. There's no, there's no, there's no difference in music. You put the, you put on the radio right now, or you put on whatever is the top streaming records, or whatever the case may be, and it, it sounds all the same, production wise. Uh, 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 they're all doing the singing and and, and uh, auto tune. It's all the same. So, for the most part, I think folks are just tired of the same thing and want something new, fresh, and different. And you know, it's it's showing in the numbers. It's showing at, at, at certain artists' uh, ticket sales um, mm-hmm. with, with some artists not being able to, to sell out the show. And it, it, record, record execs are, are, are getting frustrated, rightfully so. You know? I want to know who's to blame, man. Like, that's what I want to know. I want to know who do we blame to, you know, who do we blame for the current state of it all? Because... It, it didn't get here overnight and it, it, it was slowly progressing this way. And as producers and what people don't realize as producers, we have to kind of have our ears to the street. And what we've always done throughout our careers, we've always looked for the new developing talent and we have always been able to pinpoint who was going to come, who was going to be those people before they actually popped off and we if you go through our resume you'll see a whole bunch of people that we work with very very early on before you know that that they were going to be stars and we were able to kind of identify that but now like you have a whole bunch of folks that are signed to different labels that you don't even know you don't even know their songs like how do you guys get signed like how do all these people get all these record deals and no one knows their music no one ever heard of them but yet they're all part of this music industry machine. And I'm just wondering, is this a shotgun approach? Is this just sign anything that happens to just, you know, bubble up on the chart a little bit as far as, you know, uh, 
streams or what what's really the science behind this? What happened to the A&Rs? What happened to the execs? And how did these people even get, you know, in these positions to come out and flop so bad? Also, I think they're desperate. They're desperate and they're signing things that sound like something else. You know, you know, I said this for a long time that there's no, and, and no disrespect to the A&Rs that's out in the trenches like really looking for talent, but there's a lot of A&Rs and execs that um, they sit behind a desk and just and just look for what's trending, what's popular, the views, things of that nature. And views, trending, what's hot now, that doesn't necessarily sustain. And we said that in a, in, a, in a prior podcast. You know, if you're looking for careers and things that will stay stand the test of time, you got to get out there and find that. And those things are normally raw and uncut and you got to take that and you got to develop that and you got to mold that those things take time a record record business right now they don't want to invest in taking time that's that's part of the issue they want it now they want they want it you sign it today they want to put it out tomorrow they're looking for the quick flip and that is costing them in the long run it's 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 when it comes to creativity you're losing that when it comes to something that's going to 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 move the masses and change the culture or move it forward or have a strong impact, you you're losing that. You know, there's no there's no good content that's gonna stick to your ribs. It's all microwave, not all. A lot of it is microwave, real quick, uh here today, gone tomorrow, quick buck. Something that you said earlier when you said that basically they're sitting behind a desk and they're they're not A and R, you know, the way that they used to. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I want to put out there and I want people to be clear on is that anything that you see in terms of those type of metrics can be fabricated. And I think that's really what what a lot of folks are are that's where you're missing the mark. Is that people if you're not if you're not really deep into social media, if you're not really deep into black hat uh, marketing, you know, all of these different things that these folks use to manipulate with bots, comments, so forth, to make it appear that somebody is actually more popular than they really are. And I think this is what we all got caught up into. And when we started to look at these metrics, there wasn't anything that people can really use to say, okay, is this really real? Does this person really have a true pulse with the people? And I think that's really what this is. Is this music really even hitting? Is this music even resonating? And I think like you said, folks can, can't tell. They don't even know the difference of if this is really going to go, if this is really going to resonate with the people. And at the same time, they may not have the skills to know, you know, if this music is really going to be able to push the envelope and it's going to be able to move the culture forward. And I think a lot of that is just, the way that these guys have just been put in these positions just to kind of look at the charts move and then try to make a decision based on what the charts is doing. And it's like, those charts yeah. ain't real, bro. Like those, that those monthly streamers ain't always real, bro. That's that subscription is, subscribers aren't real. Sometimes those comments may not be real. If you're not really diving deep in, if you're not trying to see how fast the comments come in and where they're coming from, you know, comments coming from one region of the world, you know, like things like that, that people ain't really looking for. And they just say, hey, this person is bubbling. Let's take a shot at that. Look, yeah, well, that's, not, that's, not, that's not even that's not even an A and R, man. That's like you're not hiring an A and R. You're hiring more of a data um analytics person. Pretty much. You know, you're not you're not you're not taking like the, the real uh definition as far as what an A and R person actually does is I mean, you know, they get out there in the streets, goes goes to the artist, goes to their neighborhood. Sees, sees what's going on, goes to the shows, go like you got to go out there and, and, and touch and see and, and get a feel of who this person is. And then on top of that, see, are they commanding that type of energy when they walk into the room? You know, do they have that star power? Do they have that thing that like, mm, he got something. I can't, I, you know, does it, does it make, does it give you that feeling, you know? And, a lot of these artists don't. It's just okay. This person has a million views, but okay. don't even know why. 
You yeah. get at that. You know, you, like before you would be able to look at something and say, yeah, I can see why this guy is moving. But and and now it's kind of like do you, you don't you don't even see why like okay the music is is medium or mid, uh huh, um the 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 looks are mid the videos are mid, mm-hmm. right and it's just like okay why is this getting so much attention, and it, it, to me it just looks like it's mostly fabrication. So, but even if let's say let's say the the, the artist even has a million views and there there actually are valid legit views it's a whole nother ball game to get those million views into purchasing a product that's a whole nother ball game you know yeah you could get people to, to view it and be like okay that's cool and like, well, that's cool but then how do you get them to invest time into going to your website purchasing or or, or pre-purchasing or going to your shows that's a whole nother another ball game. They may like you enough to, to watch your video, but do they like you enough and are they a true fan to actually go and support your product? And for the most part, it's it's that's what's that's not happening. So so let's 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 give people a little bit of background, right? So, you know, coming from the, the legendary house of loud records, right? You 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 as a as an A and R be coming in as a as a staff producer and, you know, and an A&R consultant, like, like let, let's, let's talk about the difference between what it would take to break an artist back then and what it's taking to break an artist now and why the two is not matching up. Okay. Well, normally, normally, um, well, there was never no one way to be honest with you. Yeah. Right. There's never a way to really there, break there's, no, there's, there's never no one way to even, um, get your attention, uh, or to get your attention. You may be in a club and you hear something that's dope, and you're like, "Okay, let me check this out." Another producer may say, "Hey, check this out. I'm che- um this this artist here." Uh, you may be moving around and bumping to something, but you're moving around. That's that's the key. You're you're actually in the streets. You're in events. You're at functions. You're. Not, I'm also there. talking about after you sign them. You, you, so, you've decided that you're gonna sign them. So then now it's time for us to now it's right. time for us to put you out and to break you. So like how do get you broke? So you 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 get the artist and you have to basically before you can even before I think what happens is they're bypassing this whole stage right here. You know, yeah, they want to break you, but you there's a there's a there's a portion that's missing. And that's the that's the that's the the nurturing, that's the the sitting the artists down and working with them or going over their craft, selecting the right records, selecting, selecting the right producers, the right team over and over, kind of just, you know, making sure that this artist is going to be great. Taking that, that little spark that you see and trying to get magnified. And that's the thing that's not happening these days. What's happening now is that the, Oh, that person's popping. Or, oh, that person has a couple of views. Let's take that. Let's give them a deal. Let's repackage that, rebrand that, and let's send it out there. There's no sitting down with the artist and let's take the time to a and it. There's none of that. Let's take a year to to work with the artist. Let's take a year to groom, to, to, to groom them so that we can make sure that we're putting the right record out. Who are their fans? How are we going to market them? There's none of that is going on. They by, they they're bypassing that whole process, and as a result, you know you're doing the shotgun thing. I mean, let's put out twenty, thirty artists, and you know whatever whatever hits, you know we'll write everybody off based off of the uh, the artists that hits. And it's a it's not a yeah. You may as a business, you may you may you may make some money, but it hurts the culture. Because you're pushing out a part of music that's not, that doesn't need to come out. Technically. It's funny when you say it because it's kind of like when you think about it, it's like theoretically, you would say it's already built in. The artist already has the momentum because of the online momentum. So you would think that it would translate, right? And it doesn't, it just doesn't translate. And a lot of that goes back to what you said before is that people will like, People may even comment, but it it's it's not the same 
as true consumption. It's not, it's not the same. Um, it's not the same. And, and I think what happens is that if, if you don't spend enough time in true marketing and true sales, you don't really understand the difference. And I think there's a difference between like, if, if you even put it from a, from an e-commerce situation. And I think what happens is that people have to start treating music more like an e-commerce situation now than ever. Um, it's a digital product and you guys have to really start to really think about how this thing can be consumed off, off, not just on the Spotify and the Apple music channel, but you have to find number of ways to monetize it outside of those areas. But when you think about it in this kind of context, it's like, yeah, it's, it's easy for you. To, it's easy for you to put out a free offer and your people will respond to a free offer. But what take what, what, what you have to do to get people to respond to a free offer versus people paying for something two different situations yeah. you know it's just two different things so what you would have to do marketing wise to put out some free music or some free situation yeah okay that's cool now what's it going to take for me to sell some merch what's it going to take for me to sell some sales some tickets to, to right. some shows like this takes a different just takes a different strategy right and i think we, we kind of conflate the two too too often thinking that you know you can, if you just do a hot music video or if your song is pretty cool that that's enough and it's not enough anymore, especially now. And especially back to what you said, is that there's not enough nurturing of the artist or even nurturing of the audience. Right. Right. You can nurture the artist. You got to nurture the artist to get the artist audience ready, right? To understand how to deal with the audience, how to deal with that, how to deal with, with that situation, how to perform correctly, so forth and so on. And now we have to go out and go nurture a true audience. And I don't think enough of that is happening. Because we're thinking that followers is audience, and that's not the, that's not the same thing, right? And th- and then I have to put in, I have to add also that you know some some labels get lucky. Yeah. You know, they'll find an artist that's actually popping, or, or, or is, is, is got something on the way up. They'll jump on it, sign it, jump on the bandwagon, get it to pop, to do what it needs to do, but then the reality sets in. What's next? Where's the follow up? What do you do now? You had a you had a record, it did well, but now you don't have a follow up. Now you don't have. What are you gonna do now? And there's a lot of projects that that, that yeah, I'm not gonna put them on blast and name them, but there are a lot of big records, but then there's no follow up, and then where's the artist now? Scrambling trying to figure it out, and then the record label's like, well, we got our one record, we're good we didn't give you you know that much of a deal so we're good we collect stuff for that one record but at the end of the day it hurts the culture Ooh. that's that's really the big issue is that there's no protection for us in the long term it's like yes. a situation where it's like okay you guys are one and done yeah and, and, and it's bendable know, yeah the more one and done like this it's like it kind of creates a little bit of a situation where we are now where you can't even get a record to hit the top billboard anymore. It's like, it's crazy to me that the biggest thing in, 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 especially in the hip hop genre is artists that are in the game 25 and 30 years time. (laughs) Like that's the biggest news right now. Now we can attribute to a lot of that to the simple fact. Well, let me, let me back up a little bit because they're saying that a lot of the younger artists are having trouble selling out their shows. And that's not happening for the legacy artists. The legacy artists are sold out. Like they're they're out there and they're selling these they're selling these places out. So it's it's like okay, are people tired of what's going on with the newer artists, or is it just a situation where the music was never really that good to begin with? It was all hype. I think um, also you got to think about those those legacy artists and what they've built. And the their target audience, the age, uh, that plays a real crucial part. Their age, because if you're at a certain age, for the most part, you're likely to be able to afford certain things that someone younger may not be able to afford. You know, um, some of these concerts. You know, if you're a thirty year old, thirty plus, forty years old, you may say, you know what. Me and my boys, you know, women, my girls, we're all going to go to this show. 
you know, um, but some younger may not necessarily have it that maybe they have it, but they may not be able to go with a crew, you know. And if you really think about it, the younger uh, audience, what is the age that they market is being marketed to? Is it twelve to twenty something? And if they're marketing to twelve year olds to 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 twenty something. You know very well know from twelve to about eighteen or maybe twenty one is not getting to no shows or clubs. So they're 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 not getting to the, into those those clubs. They're not getting into they, right. you're losing that all out out right. the gate. They can't support you as much. So you're losing a whole audience. But people who are thirty plus forty, they could they could go with you all the way. They could subscribe to 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 whatever subscription to listen to your music. They could they could. They had their credit cards and everything. They could go purchase your, your 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 material. They could go to the shows, maybe multiple times. Yeah. Events. They could do these things. So, I think that also has a has a a, a factor in the whole thing. It's it's a it's a it's a crazy crazy town, and I, I and I'm looking at it now, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay. There's no superstars, but most of us, most of the people that were probably going to be budding superstars, they got, you know, uh, cut down. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't look like the industry wants to replace them. Like, that's what I'm starting to notice. I'm starting to notice is like there seems to be like a a very slow uh, transition to put on new artists in the same demographic, if you've noticed that. It just seemed like this has been a shift to, you know, where, you know, a lot of the ladies are coming into prominence, but they're not really looking for that next guy. Right. It's kind of like, you know, we don't even want to be bothered with it. And, you know, while you got these other guys that look like they may be fading, right? Like little baby and so forth and so on. They say they may be fading now. Um, Who's the replacement? Right. And I, I I don't see who that is, you know, really right now. Like I don't see the, that that next person that's supposed to fill in these shoes, or be that next person that's supposed to really break through. And the question is, what what's causing that? Is it because the music is no good, or is it because people are not checking for it anymore? Because it's always been too violent. Like what's really the, the, the situation conflict. behind that? It's such a combination of things. I think that's what makes it so difficult to kind of pinpoint because it's so many moving parts that's contributing to where it is now. You know, there's, you know, the violence in hip hop, you know, and artists getting cut down, you know, and people do not want to tune in and listen to that, you know, um, not to mention, you know, okay, the age bracket thing, you know, uh, Older folks may not necessarily be wanting to listen to um, a eighteen year old rapping. Maybe they're just nah. I'm good. I want to listen to the older generation that I am accustomed to and I enjoy that kind of music. So you got a whole audience that's not even bothering with that. You know, um, you have you got to think about since the pandemic, a lot of people's mindsets has changed, and they're not taking you know they're not subscribing to the same things they subscribed to before, just in general. You know, people's mindset is just totally different, you know. Um, so there's a there's a lot of things. Business technology is moving rapidly forward, and that's um, hurting it in, in another way. Uh, the, the way business is being done with the record labels and streamer services and people selling the catalogs. There's just so many different things that's contributing to uh, this atmosphere right now that, you know, consumers are just like, eh. You know, everything's sounding the same. Yeah. You know, you know, the North sounds like the South, the South sounds like the West. You know, it all sounds the <laughs> same. So it's there's there's nothing there's nothing special. And let me add this. They bombard us with posting, posting, posting. It's important to post, post every day, multiple multiple times a day to get your engagements up, right? And they drill this in our heads. They, they, they drill it over and over that we got to post, we got to post. But also, when an artist is posting so frequently, you kind of lose something. You lose, you, you lose the mystery of this artist. 
you lose the mystique. You know, when the artist is continuously posting how they made a record, how they made a song, now the mystery is kind of gone per se, you know? So you, I, I think there's a touch of that also. Now the consumer is like, oh, that's how it's made? Oh, that's how it's done? I, I could do it too. There's, there's nothing special about that. I could do it too. There's no behind the scenes. There's no mystery to the artist, you know? And, and when you kind of remove that veil, it, it, it takes something, it takes what's special, like it just removes it. So I think, I think that's a piece of it as well. You know, technology has somewhat hurt the culture in, in, in certain instances. It's funny that you say it like that because of the, the, they always talk about, they always talk about when a, when a person has a product or a service and like, you know, you like vanilla ice cream, right? Um, but you won't eat it every day. It gets to a point where, you know, you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to eat that anymore. And I think it gets this, it's this type of the same situation where it's kind of like we're you're posting every day. We see you every day. It's, it's yeah. Like you say, we take this, we take the special out because now you're, you're too familiar. You're too much like me. And I think that's what the, the, the problem has been is that we've been trying to let everyone say, Hey, um, you know, I'm just like you. Okay, if you're just like me, there's no reason for me to buy your music, right? Like this, like, like you, you're just like me, right? Like, so I think there's a there's a difference here. Like, I think we have to be able to delineate that. Mm -hmm. On the on the next situation that we were talking about, I was going to say, um, you know, I I want to give some tips to new artists now who are coming in who are saying, okay. This this is an oversaturated market. Like we already know this. It's oversaturated. For anybody making music, it's oversaturated. Um we have always made the argument that you should be uh bundling your music. Your music should be bundled with something else to sell. Whether it be merch, whether it be concert tickets, whether it be something that your music alone is no longer enough to basically get your situation to move like how it used to move like back in the days. Um, like we, we were f firm uh, believers in creating products and using your music to market those products and vice versa. What else can we tell these folks out here that can be able to Get these folks to know that hey, your your music is not going to break unless we are doing taking these steps. I think they got to make the consumer understand how special they are. I mean, the artist is. They have to mark themselves in a way that, like, nobody can do it. And when I reach out to you. It is, it's, it's something special. They got to create these moments. So basically what I'm saying is artists need to pull back a little bit. And then when they offer these things, they got to give it in a way that it's, it's, it's special because they've been pulling back. Yeah. You know, it's not like, okay, I'm in your face every day and I'm going to give you this product and I'm giving you every, it's just, you're not special. You're not special. You know, I could do it too. And I think we we got away from that, you know. Our artists need, I think, in my opinion, the artists need to pull back a little bit, you know, um, so that they could appear more, you know, more special, you know. So we don't know everything that's going on, you know. Yeah. Drip us the 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 things that are happening. Be selective on what you give. Give teasers, you know. Make you feel like, oh, this is something, you know. Get people excited. So that when it's time, when the moment does happen, it is an event, it's a movie. And then you give extra, you give a bundle, you give this, you make it, you make it something, a 10 of 10, that's it. A 10 of 10 of something else later down the line, you know, um, I think it's just being creative and not trying to sound like somebody else, not trying to be an algorithm, you know, looking at what everybody's doing and saying, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm over here. 
I'm going to do something totally different. That's not this. I'm not looking to follow that. I'm looking to create a different sound, something else, something special. And I'm going to deliver something else. And um, I think when you do that and just to be creative, you stand out. Also, work on your craft. I oh. think that's, I think yeah. that is like, that's like. But that's from the record. Like, but in, in hip hop today, I think it's lost. I think what happens is that guys start to rap and then they quickly hit a ceiling. And it's like, you quickly hit the ceiling. It's like, how do you guys hit the ceiling so fast? And now your music just doesn't progress past the ceiling. And I think a lot of that is because you guys did not take enough time to really study your craft. You did not take enough time to look at the artists that preceded you. Like, look at the artists that created these long careers. Look at those albums. Look how those albums were constructed. Look how those albums progress. Look how those albums change for the time and, you know, what they did to it in order to, you know, maintain some sort of relevancy. And I don't think people really pay enough attention to it. If you, if you go back as far as saying, okay, uh, an LL Cool J and look at the progression of his albums and what he did to make sure that he maintained relevancy and make sure that each album had some sort of, you know, nuance that made it different. Or if you're looking at a, a tribe or if you're looking at a Nas or even a Jay-Z, a Outkast, like these albums just continue to evolve and, they, you know, the artists continue to evolve and be able to, you know, create longevity, kill a mic, you name them. How, how about, how about look how that works. How about this? Write your raps. Whoa. They write like, them. They write them in the phone. Oh, knock it off. Knock it off. Like, like, <laughs> the, 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 the whole, the whole, um, look, everybody cannot be a Jay-Z. Okay. Not everybody like trying to say the first thing that comes to their mind and, and, and get on the mic and say it. That doesn't work for everybody, and that's okay. You know, like, spend time, get get yourself a pen and a pad, write your raps, go over it, go over it again. Make sure, make sure it's tight. Make sure it drops right. Make sure the flow is right. Make sure, is that the flow you want? Is that the right words you want to use? Do you need the curse there? Do you need the curse at all to get your point across? You know, like... I don't think they're studying, and I think artists are just saying whatever that comes to their mind and saying it in a way that it's just like whatever, one take and done, and they go on with their business. No, man, this is this is a craft, and you need to 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 take care of it. You need to nurture it. You need to get in that booth. You need to sit down and write your raps, recite it, say it again, get it right. You know, if, if you're expecting your audience and your fans the consumers to take their time out to purchase your product. Don't you think you owe it to them to take the time out to make sure that you give them the best product that you can? Like it's microwave, man. Like you said, man, it's microwave, man. Right. Like, you're asking, but you're like, asking, you're asking an attention deficit generation. Like you get on take like, your time and do something like that. Like, I don't, I don't think that exists. I think what happens is that we they have all been solely idea like oh yeah we did that song in five minutes. I think I think that is I think that is what's been sold, not not the, not the 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 hundreds of hours that Kanye would put into a Twisted Dark Fantasy album, like you, people don't talk about that. That's why you, these albums will last the test of time. This is why these folks will be touring thirty and forty years from now, and I can't say that for a lot of you guys. You know yeah. what? They don't. Yeah, they don't. They don't take the craft serious. That's mm, that. I can't say that. You could. You but you could tell. You could tell they're not taking the craft serious. They want the bag. Everything is the bag. The bag. The bag. The bag. That's fine. You know, I I did this for five minutes. I did this for ten minutes. Oh, you know. But nobody's taking the time out to say, you know what? I st like. You could tell the difference. The artists. The artists that study. You could tell the students are in the game, that they listen. They said, okay, that guy raps like this or that or he used that flow you know you could tell the difference you see who studies and if you're talking about a younger generation of artists the kendricks the coles you know even the drake you can tell who studies because you can tell that they do that you can tell that they study their greats 
and they make sure that they make sure that these they paid attention to the the arcs of their careers. And these guys are making the right moves and they're making names for themselves and making sure that they're not going to be, you know, forgotten or just pushed to the side by making this trendy music, trying to make trendy music. Making trendy music is cool when you want to get the attention in the beginning, but it's not for you to have a long career in this situation. And, you know, I remember us when we transitioned from New York and we were transitioning from New York and we were coming and setting up shop out here in the South. And and, and we remember as a lot of artists that we were, you know, um, in connection with, we were talking to a lot of artists and it, it was just this thing where it was just that I'm big in my city. I'm good with that. You know, I'm, I'm good with my city. I'm good with being able to uh, do whatever I need to do regionally. And we would kind of discuss like, Hey man, how do we expand your sound? How do we get you to, to, to be larger? Like they weren't interested in that. They weren't interested in, in putting in the time and what it would take to really be here. And, you know, we can count them off and there's nowhere to be heard of now. They're like, just, just flashes in the pan and that's it. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it shows, it shows and tells, you know, if, you're serious about anything, you know, you got to take the time to nurture it, practice it over and over again. You got to want to be, a, you, you got to want to be a perfectionist to an extent, you know, because all of this off the top of the head, if if that's not your, 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 your skill, then you don't need to necessarily do that. You know, focus every day on your, your, your craft, your talent, and build that, you know, because you, you owe it to your consumers. You, you know, you, there's too much off of the head trash, saying the same, the, the, whatever that comes in your mind, and not saying, well, should I, should, should I say that? <laughs> you know, should I say that? Should, should I say it this way? Is that the right words to use? You're not questioning yourself. And then what's worse is you got a bunch of yes people around you too that, that, that go, goes and encourages it. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, it's re- it's re- it's really crazy. And the more that I look at this article, man, and it, it's it's really telling. Like it's really telling. It's like when they say no one knows what to do right now. Nobody knows how to break music right now. Is quoted one exec went as far as an estimate says nobody knows how to break music right now, and everyone is lost. Jug, I think I think folks are too focused. On the, I gotta break it. I gotta break something. I gotta make a hit. You know, I remember just let's make some music, and you're just creating some records, organically creating records, and out of that something magical happens. You know, when you have the right artists, when you pair them up with the right producers, and they're in there grooving, and then something happens. I remember going creating records or being part of records and then going back to the office and playing what, and everyone's like, oh, what's that? Oh, that needs to come out. You know, like, you didn't go into it thinking that you were going to make a band or you want to make a band. We just said, let's see what we come up with. You know, there was no, there was no pressure. There was no, uh, this has to be done. We need to get this out by this quarter. So, and I, I, I would, I would ask you, how do you turn that into a business? Like, you know, in, in that type of situation, that's, that's, that creates a horrible business model so, where you need endless cash to create, but don't have you, but there's no return or the returns are way, way down the line. And the question is, most businesses can be funded maybe a year, maybe two, but we got to see some money. So I would, say, I would say this to that. I would say you need to mix, mix, mix and match. What I mean is, okay, you have what you have, or you have a model that you're using for your ROI, but you do need to have a certain portion to focus on creative music. You need to have, whether it's an incubator label, a bunch of designated just for this so that you could create th- that kind of music. So you could create that. You could create that foundation. Yeah, you can have your other stuff that you're just putting out and whatever the case may be, but you need to have something in development. And I think that's what's missing. 
we're missing development. So, so I thought that's what labels were doing, right? When you talk about like the empires and, you know, some of the other labels that, you know, the 300s and so forth and so on, like, wasn't that supposed to be the situation where they were supposed to be developing, nurturing, and as incubator talent for these labels? And then you had the other side of the situation that was basically saying, okay, we got the ones that are nurturing, developing artists. Then we got the other one that's basically going to be signing artists based off of whatever the metrics were showing online. And we were using that for quick flips in case something hit, right? Shotgun approach in case something stuck off the wall. But we still had this incubator on the left that said, okay, like Universal Republic and stuff like that. Still had the, the orchard and we still have this thing on the left that's going to help to find that next superstar, that next megastar. Well, what's what's happening is even those incubators are being like, they're just doing a shotgun thing with the incubators. They're just grabbing anything instead of just saying, okay, we're going to focus on these five acts. We're going to have certain ANRs with credentials who have a history and working with these, with these artists one-on-one -on -one versus, Hey, these 10 labels are interested in, 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 in being a part of our system and we're going to get them a deal and let's wait to see what they come up with. And that's what's happening. You know, a lot of these, these incubator deals are just, they're, 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 they're at arms or in length. They're, they're over there. There's there's not a maid, there's not a person that's going into these these incubator labels and saying okay a real hands on approach and saying okay as your A and R I'm going to do this I'm going to give you this I'm going to get you in touch with this producer or we're going to create this together or I'm going to sit in the studio with you and we're going to work on this the A and Rs are not doing that they're leaving it to the artists and their team to do whatever they want to do and bring it to the table. And I think A&Rs need to be more hands-on. I think an A&R needs to be that person that says, no, that's not it. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're popping over here. This ain't it. The, the airs needs to be in tune to what's going on. And if they have the credentials, they have the experience, then that person needs to be in the room and say yes or no. Or say, okay, how can we take this raw talent and, 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 and turn it into this? I think that's where the disconnect is, is because there's not enough people with enough experience to tell an artist of a certain caliber, that's not it. Again, an artist of a certain caliber, you, you, you're not going to be able to have a voice or a say in what they're, what they're creating, depending on what caliber artist it is. So and you've been in a situation. We have. We have been in a situation where there are high caliber artists and we've been able to say, Hey, that's, that, that shit is whack. Yeah. And, and that's not, that's not it. And the artists did it anyway, you know, yeah. but, but, at, but at least, you know, and I think part of it is what kind of caused a little bit of the falling out in some cases where you did may have said, we may have said, Hey, that's not it. That's not going to work. Or, you know, why, why are all these records out here that don't have hooks or what's going on with this or, why this is not working the way it needs to work. And, you know, to your point, not everybody has the, the, the balls to say, Hey, that's not it. Because yeah. you know, their, their job is on the line. You know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. You know, I'm just going to keep moving along until I find an artist that I can get along with personally. Right. People are not realizing that, Hey, you have to develop those kind of skills to be able to get along with artists who can be volatile at times. Like this is this is the industry. This is what it is. You know, a lot of artists are high strung and they have, you know, different types of personalities. You gotta be able to know how to 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 navigate that. You gotta be able to tell the artist this ain't it. You know, it, it, and, a, it, and the artist gotta be in a position where they can respect it because you gotta come to the table with enough. And I think that's like to what to your point, what you said is like, hey, making sure that you're getting the right talent to to nurture these artists. So that when these artists want to buck, you can always say, hey, listen, we, we've been here. We understand what it takes. And these are like real music people, real music ears. And I know some folks will say, hey, this is too old or this is too this. Look, what you guys are doing isn't working. Like, it's not working. I'm, I'm, we, hate to, we hate to break it to you, but it ain't working. And if, you, if, you, if you're still listening 
to any of the legacy artists, that means that all of all of the producers and ARs that help make those music are futurists. Because they're able to make music that lasted 10, 15, 20, 30 years into the future. And you're still playing it. You know, and, and that's and that's what you have to really look at. And I'll tell you a quick joke for, you know, just just this weekend, you know, my kids' school had like this little, you know, skating outing, whatever, like, okay, they're gonna go out to skate with the school for, you know, beginning of the year, or whatever. And, you know, my my kids are elementary school. We're in a skating rink and it's, you know, it's it's a diverse school, whatever, diverse little area. What do you think they're playing in there? Snoop <laughs> shook one. <laughs> right? And I and I and I'm looking and I'm looking at my and I'm looking and I'm like, you know, like like why are they playing shook ones? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's the clean version, but why are they playing shook ones? And I, and it's just like it just doesn't fit it just doesn't feel and it, it rocked in that place, but it just doesn't feel like that that, that music is still playing. Like, yeah, it's still playing. My my single digit kids will probably know you shook. It ain't no such thing as halfway quick. And I didn't play it. Right? So so that's crazy. So that took that goes to show you that hey how old is that record? Jeez. Come on, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. It's like that's this is And that's my and that's my favorite hip hop record of all time. Listen, I, I that's man, you know, that's that's up there with my, you know, Troy and them, you know, for me. So so it's like, but this is what we're talking about. We're talking about having the the, the 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 mindset of knowing that this record is going to do these things, you know? And I don't think that people really understand that. It's like we sell music to artists all the time. We might have a track that is a year, two years, three years, four years, five years before it gets on. So if it gets if it finally gets placed three, four years later, four four or five years later, were we not indeed futurists? Yeah. Like, do we not know how where the culture was gonna be, and what it what, what sound it needed? So this is so this is I think they they discounting what we do. They're discounting what a lot of, you know, your other A and R's used to do. The A and R's that made great music. The executives that were behind a lot of the great music. And I know people are always like, hey, we need new blood. We need this. We need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look what you guys got. Look at what you guys got. You got an industry that's imploding. And the only way folks is making money is, you know, they, they have to be glad that TikTok is out, you know, and different ways to consume it or consume yep. the past media before or the past music but before. That's what kind of is generating the income for folks now. They're making a lot of money, but remember, they're making money off a of catalog and making that money off that new music. That's what people ain't really want to talk about. That's why they're buying up the catalogs. Yeah. They're making the music. The money's off the catalog. It's the catalog music and all the licensing deals for the old music that's being infused into new platforms is how you guys is making your money. Just, you guys know, trying to I make just, it seem like as if y'all making new music that's making all the money and that ain't what's happening. Doug, I just took my son to see uh, Ninja Turtles. Oh, you, you know what I... You, you see what that was. So all the hip-hop, they were playing Annie up in the... In you, the in you see what that is? Oh. You see what that is? I was like, oh, you see what that is? Because that's how you define New York music. Tribe, Wu Tang. Mm, right. You know Tribe, Wu Tang, um, MOP, you know? And look look who produced this film. They 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 you know saying they're not even like, you know, they don't even that ain't from my community. They don't even look like us, but yet they they are more in tune. Right. What's going on versus what we doing. I like, know. Has, has, and then that goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, the music, uh, um, being able to talk to you and, and and give you a story of you know what region you're from, where you are, you know, you want to if you want to create a certain scene, or, or or a certain region in a movie, I should be able to go to a, I should be able to go to the the library, and certain music should be able to 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 match up. Can't, you can't really do that right now. Like, if I hear a song, I don't know where the artist is from. That's crazy, bro. And that used to be part of a lot of the magic, too, if you think about it, because it'd be like, okay, nothing sounded like Nelly. It's St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? Like, nothing sounded right, like right. that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nothing sounded like, you know, Crucial Conflict. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Mm-hmm. Nothing sounded like that. Nothing sounded like, like you know, uh, bone. Like they they represented where they was from, you know. But a lot of that is again is all gone because, you know. And if people say how we can't break any music because it all sounds the damn same. Yeah. Like that's why you can't break it, and you're not gonna be able to break it because it all sounds the same. At some I'm point, trying, and I'm trying to break the same thing. <laughs> And listen, and, and another thing that we I, I want to just touch on, you know, because we now that we get into the real meats and potatoes of the situation, and it's kind of funny getting meats and potatoes, but a lot of it is these guys' faults is because these guys took the same teams and tried to monopolize all the projects. That's the other part behind the scene that no one wants to talk about that. Hey, you guys basically strong-armed all the projects and say, hey, if you're not part of this little producer group, or if you're not part of the little publishing group, yeah, then you can't get on these projects, right? Yeah. And then you guys keep recycling the same writers, same producers on every damn project. Oh. Now this is what we got. So now you guys started a little formula because you guys were trying to hoard all of the publishing and trying to hoard all of the production, you know? And now you weren't really going out here and really putting, getting different sounds and different just things from different producers. And this is what you got now is because you guys try to hoard everything and try to produce it in mass, put it in like a mass production mill. Right. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Because they, they started to look more of what can we make by hoarding it versus, you know, what we need this record to really sound like a dope New York record. So let's get a, so let's get a dope New York producer on board to give us that sound we need. No, they, they weren't doing that. They said, you know what? We're going to just stay right here yeah. and, and and we're going to hoard it and we're just going to give them whatever and they're going to take it because they signed to this. They signed to this publishing company and they signed to this at the record label. If you're not signed to this, you can't. Like, that's the thing that makes me that really work my nerves is that, hey, if you're not signed to this particular publishing company, you can't you can't place no songs on this album, right? Like what, like you know? And then when you get through the cracks, or when you're able to build a relationship with the artist, these folks are coming looking at you like, "How'd you get through?" Yeah, that happened to us. <laughs> like I still have the old I still have the old emails, like certain publishing companies were like, like, like all certain A and R's. Like how'd you guys make it through? Yeah. Like how'd you make it through? Like you, you didn't come through our our uh, circle of misfits to you know get on this project. Like you guys shouldn't have gotten on this project. Basically, that's basically what they were trying to tell us mm-hmm. is that you shouldn't have gotten on this project without us saying that you got on this project. But the artists, you know, we built that relationship and we were able to get our music straight through. And that's there's not enough of that going on. Or like you said, the A and R's are controlling it too much and not really, you know not really opening up the situation because again, they have their own personal interests in there. And that's what we got to try to avoid that too. Like, okay, yeah, we know that you got your team, but at the same time, you know, you can't be in a situation where you getting paid for keeping everything in house. That's a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. Yep. At one time, and also char- were charging for demos. Hey man. Because they weren't they weren't making no money, man. And and I was co- I was confused because I'm like, yo, but isn't that your job anyway? You know, like that's your that's your, you that's literally your job to listen to demos. You know, how are you charging people for that as well? You know, and the I I have, I would have to say the A and R job, and um, it's a it's a, it's a tough job. It, it truly is a tough job. It's not all glitter and glamour and gold, as you would assume. And it's a job that you can very well lose at the end of the year. You know, if you haven't signed the right artist, if that artist hasn't created something that's going to uh, work or compete properly, you know, you could lose your job very quickly. And then what? So. I get it when art when when A and R's are trying to find additional uh w- revenue I should say additional revenue and to try additional ways to just keep their position I, I get it but if it's gonna hurt the culture then it's a problem man listen 
That's the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast, folks. Be sure you're checking us out at www.architectbeats.com. Um, of course, we always have to say this episode is sponsored by the books, the Songwriter's Guide to Song Registration, the Musician's Guide to Music Copyrights, the Musician's Guide to Music Publishing, and also, also excuse me, the Ultimate Guide to Forming Your Own Music LLC. Those are available now. We thank you for your support. For everyone that's supporting, you know, it continues to keep us doing what we're doing. Um, any parting words to to those to those depressed executives who can't break the shitty music that they've decided to sign based off of bots and algorithms and all the types of weird shit that they keep doing, they keep doing that, you know, that we've been talking about it because you guys are not willing to really do the work to see what's really popping out here. Um, I would have to say, um, they need to figure out or they need to remind themselves why they got into this, to this game. If you got in this game solely just for money alone, then that this is why you're in the position you're in. But if you're in this business because you also want to move the culture forward, like you love music, then I think this is the time to kind of lean on that. Look for things that you love, things that reminded you of why you got into this business, why you got into this game, that love for hip hop, you know, and look for that. Look for the things you love and then put that under the arm Nurture it. Yeah, you could do the other things you were doing to keep your job or sustain you or meet the, the label's quota. But work on other things. Work on the real music you love that you're passionate about. Work on that. And I think if we got enough people doing that, we will create uh, more future stars. Well said, brother. Again, check us out, www.architectbeats.com. Until next time. Peace. Thanks, everybody. Be safe out there.